Hello and welcome. My name is Mickey Burdick. Today what we're going to be looking at in this first video is Vectorworks 2022. I'm working on it today on a Windows machine. What this first video hopes to do is really just give you a basic understanding of the Vectorworks workspace. When you first open it up, there is a uh, there is a lot going on here on this screen. It's a very daunting program. Uh, there's buttons and tools everywhere, and there's a thousand ways to do a single simple thing. But I want you to be able to feel comfortable in here, in this workspace, and the, to be able to find all the things that you need. Vectorworks is a wonderful program. If you are a student, if you're an aspiring designer, uh, I highly recommend you go out and get it. They have free licenses for students. Uh, at Vectorworks. So please go out and get it. It's really becoming an industry standard. So it would really benefit you, I believe, to, to understand this program or to at least have a working knowledge of how to, to get around in this digital space. Uh, this video today is a little bit drier than some of the others, but hopefully it'll set a good baseline vocabulary for you and hopefully it's a video that you can come back to whenever you get lost. Vectorworks has all the tools that you need and then some. Uh, it's highly customizable, but sometimes it is hard to know where to look or even what to look for. Probably the quickest way to learn Vectorworks is to jump in and just start making stuff. So we'll want to get to that pretty quickly. And while you're watching this, I hope that you'll have the program open so that you can pause and try stuff and mess things up and sort of bounce back and forth. Um, hopefully after this video and the next one, you'll feel comfortable enough to jump in and start playing. So in the third video of this series, we'll get into actually just 2D modeling and really just start having some fun in the space. So with all that out of the way, here we go. This is your basic Vectorworks workspace. The layout's pretty similar to a lot of other programs. Across the top here, you have your menu. A lot of these will be familiar. Under File, you have things like Document Settings, Save, Print, Publish, etc. Under Edit, nothing too odd here. You have your edit uh, functions like Copy, Paste, Undo, Redo, etc. Under View, this is where we start to get a little more specific to Vectorworks. We have uh, a lot of different options on here having to do with viewports, renderings, basically any way that you want to look at your drawings. You'll find options for that under view. Modify, this gives you a lot of options for playing with uh, two-dimensional shapes. Model is very similar to modify, except that deals a lot more with 3D tools. Uh, so modify is your 2D tools, model is your 3D tools. Spotlight, and here's where we'll get into a lot of the lighting stuff. Um, you should have this if you're a design student. You should have the Spotlight edition of Vectorworks. If not, let me know and we'll figure out a way to get that turned on for you. Under Tools, there's not a ton in here uh, I really deal with usually other than a couple of preferences you can change. I wouldn't worry about it right now. Text, you can write things in Vectorworks and you can do things with that text. You can turn it into three-dimensional shapes, all that fun stuff. We'll go over that. Event design, I'm not going to get into too much today, but they have a lot of really powerful tools for creating stages, seating, uh, soft goods, things like that. Window, uh, again, I don't get into here too, too much, but the one thing you'll want today is probably palettes. If you're seeing something on my screen and it's not on your screen, or you have extra stuff on your screen, if you go to Window, Palettes, you can get in here and turn on and off a lot of these different palettes that we're going to be looking at today. So Windows an important one, especially early on, just knowing how to find all the things you really want. Cloud, we're not going to mess with too much today, and Help, uh, that's just a Help menu. So that's your basic menu across the top. Um, directly below that we have Tabs, so you can have different projects open, and you can just tab from project to project. Underneath that, we have our view bar. So this will tell you how you are looking at the project that you're working on. You can, similar to Photoshop or similar to a lot of different programs, we work in layers here. 
in Vectorworks. We also work in Sheets and Classes. The next video is going to deal exclusively with figuring out the difference between classes and layers and sheets. Uh, but for now, just know that this is an area where you can select which class you're looking at or working in, which layer you're working in. Uh, it will also tell you what plane you're working in. This here, you can zoom. I don't actually use this a lot. I prefer to use a mouse. If you don't have a mouse, I highly suggest you get one to use for Vectorworks. Um, it's just going to make it much easier. With your scroll wheel, you can zoom in and out. Uh, control plus your scroll wheel will move you up and down. Shift with your scroll wheel will move you left, right. So uh, I try to avoid this too, too much, and I just use my mouse to zip around. Um, also over here, you'll see uh, your different views, so you can view something from the top, you can view something from the right, isometric views, and so forth. You can also change, right now we're in orthogonal uh, uh, projection, but we can move to perspective as well. It doesn't really show too well on this piece, but you can see how it changes the way that you see it. So all of those settings are right up across here in your view bar. There's some stuff below that. Down here you can play with different settings. Again, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds today as to what all this does, but if you're looking to turn something on or off, say you don't like this grid in the background, you can use a little quick preference thing here. Some people like to work with darker screens. You can turn that on or off. Um, if you're overhead, you can see our page boundary right now. You can turn that on or off. And if there's an option that you want to change you can uh, that's not available readily, you can come into here. There's all this different stuff you can customize. So again, let's not get too deep in the weeds on this stuff. That'll come. Once you start working in Vectorworks, you'll know a little bit more about your own work style and what does or doesn't suit you, so uh, I won't worry too much about that. Let's get to some of the fun stuff though. Over here on the top left is our basic tool palette. I'm not going to get into all the tools in video three. We will start getting into some of this and actually start drawing stuff. Just know that up here you have all your different tools, your text tool, you have a rectangle tool, do do circle tool and also some of these tools are used not just for making shapes but for manipulating for example the mirror tool you have uh, something selected and you can draw a line to mirror it the selection tool is a big one though i highly recommend that you start to learn some of the hotkeys for some of the things you're going to be going back to if you'll notice here i'm just hovering over the tool and then just to the right of the tool name, you'll see the X. That is the, the hotkey for it. So if I'm doing something else, if I'm drawing here, and I want to switch to my selection tool, I just hit X, and it brings up my selection tool. So now I can modify or move or do whatever with it. Okay? I think it's also important to note, when you bring up pretty much any tool, I'm in the rectangle tool now, this here is your toolbar. It has different modes that you can use. So for example, right now you'll see this first mode is selected. That's corner to corner mode. So I can click a corner, click the second corner, and that's my rectangle. There are other modes such as center to corner. I can click there, there. There's also this one's great if you want to do a rectangle on an angle. It's a three point. So you set one line and then you bring it down a different way. So all of these different tools have different modes. For example, in circle, you can start from the center out. Doot, doot. You can go along the diameter. Boop. So the more we get into uh, actually playing with a lot of these tools, you'll see that um, Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, you'll see that as you start playing, there's a ton of different things you can do. Some of the tools have little fields where you can fill in 
So this is a dual two line mode. Um, if you draw that, it draws two lines. I love this little tool. And you can change how wide that is in the dialog box here. I want to make that just one foot. And as I go along here, or you can change where it's coming from. Right now it's drawing along the top edge. You can draw along the bottom edge. So that is your toolbar right in here. A lot of really useful stuff. Moving below that, this is our attributes. Um, so every shape that we draw has different attributes. Uh, it can be filled in. For example, right now our default is set at solid and white color. So I select the object, and then you can change the color of the object here. You can also change the pen, the outline. I'll zoom in a little bit there. So you have your fill up here, you have your pen right here, and I want my pen to be red. So there's my shape now. You can also set different uh, line types. So say you don't want a solid line, you want a dashed line. That'll give you a dashed line. You can also set different fills for um, patches, patterns, etc. So you can use that to really uh, modify and make your drawings pretty specific. It gets even a little fancier once you get into three-dimensional modeling with textures and things like that. We'll get to that in a while, but for now, all you need to know is that objects have different attributes, and you can change those. Say I'm just drawing a line. I can make that line much thicker. I can add a little, little arrow to it. And it's all possible and pretty quick to use. I will say if you start drawing things and you're wondering why everything is coming out weird, it might be because your attributes are preset. If you have nothing selected and you change this, everything will be purple. Every shape you draw after that is going to be purple. The way to change that is to just hit escape, make sure you're not selecting anything, and change it back to whatever you want your preset to be, and then every shape you draw now will be of your presets. Again, you can change just the single shape, or you can select multiple shapes and edit them together. That's attributes. Moving below that, um, you'll see we have different tool sets down here. So this one that I'm on is our 3D modeling tool set. Has some really interesting stuff. Uh, for example, if we go into a 3D look, I can grab my push-pull tool and I can bring that out. Um, you can chamfer edges. Um, so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do in here. This is your 3D palette when we get into that. Um, but there are other palettes for lighting, for dimensions, for all sorts of stuff. Um, this event design one is nice. It gives you options to make seating, to make curtains. You'll use curtains, the soft goods tool, a lot. So you see, it's just a really quick way to draw curtains and soft goods. Uh, and it's all, again, endlessly customizable. We'll get into that. But just to know, if you're looking for specific tool sets, um, that's where they are. You'll notice I just accidentally undocked this tool set. That's something else I want you to be aware of, is you can customize all of this. You can move these around, you can undock, you can completely get rid of. So there goes my attributes. I'm going to bring my basics back in here. Just drag it over. There it is. You can pull these around. So I say I undocked and I want my attributes back. As a reminder, just go to Window, Palettes, Attributes. I have it back. We'll just drag it in here. 
set it there. And again, then I can adjust these up and down depending on how you like your workspace. I generally like this. A lot of folks leave a lot of different menus docked in here, but for me, or undocked, kind of just floating, for me, I really like a pretty clean workspace. Um, and I like to be able to see all of my tools in a single go. So uh, this is a layout that works for me. But I think the more you play with it, the more you'll know what tools you want to use. Moving across to the right hand side of the page, uh, over here we have our object info palette. Again, every object has attributes and there are information about each shape. So this shape I just drew, if you look over here, it's selected. It'll tell you how wide it is and how high it is. It'll give you the perimeter. Um, it'll give you the area. If you're saying, I want to carpet this part of the stage, it's a really nice way just to be able to figure out how much carpeting you're going to need to buy or whatever that the case may be. You can also change objects from over here. So right now it's drawn at 9 foot 10, 5 foot 8 uh, inches high. That's a little arbitrary. Say I wanted it just to be 8 foot by four foot and there you go it'll also tell you where on the page it is that's what this is telling you so I can move things around on the page just using this if I want this to be centered at zero zero on the page just click the center say I want that corner or let's say I want a corner of it right on zero 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 and that corner is right now in the very dead center of all my axes. So that's object info. There's a couple of tabs up here. Once we get into 3D modeling, we'll be playing with render a little bit. But for now, uh, shape is really kind of just the one thing you need to know. Moving below that, we have our navigation palette. Um, this is where you can flip through between classes and layers and sheets. Um, there's a lot more to go into here. That's a really big subject. Um, but for now, just know that that is where your navigation pane is. Um, once you get into some other types of files, here's another demo file. I can have classes for a whole variety of things. Classes in general tell you what a thing is in a drawing and layers kind of tell you where it will be in a drawing and then sheet layers are used for printing usually. So um, that's classes, layers, and sheet layers. Um, we do most of our work in design layers and then we export it and print it in sheet layers. That's a big subject though. That's going to be the entire topic of the next video because there's a lot to get into. Um, so I will not try to bog down in that. For now, let's just kind of review though where everything is. And uh, starting up at the top, we have our menu bar once again. Across here, we have our view bar. We have our toolbar and modes. We have quick preferences over here. We also have our basic tool palette up here in the upper left. Attributes gives you a way to modify, to color, change the shapes that you've made. Down here we have other tool sets. Over here on the right we have our object info. And then we also have our navigation palette with classes, layers, and sheets. Uh, I forgot to mention also down below that I have a snapping palette. Snapping is a way of saying um, I want an exactly horizontal line. It'll snap to that automatically. It'll click in. You'll see it lock in at ex exactly 45 degrees or 30 degrees. Or it'll lock into objects. It'll lock into a point. So it's a way to make things much more precise in terms of drawing angles and such. So that's snapping. You can turn that on and off down here. You can turn it all off. You can turn off certain elements of it but that is snapping and that is located in the bottom right. All right, that's about enough for this first video. I know that's a lot to take in. Uh, next video, we're going to be talking about classes, layers, sheets, 
views, rendering, things like that. And then hopefully in video three, we're going to actually just start playing with stuff. Uh, and that's where we'll, we'll get our hands a little dirtier. All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.